Good morning, everybody. Welcome to worship on this 4th of July weekend. We're going to start off with some announcements. So next week, we'll be celebrating any young adults that have graduated this spring. And so we will be doing that hopefully on the front patio in between our services at like 930. Um, weather permitting, if not, we'll be in Highland Hall. So it will also be our first summer fellowship time. We haven't started that yet. So next week we'll have some fellowship time hosted by worship and music. So we look forward to that next week. Also, um, Vacation Bible School is almost here. It is July 11th to the 15th in the evenings. And we need just a couple of things left to tie up some loose ends. So we um, have a board in the back by the coat room that has various items on it. I think most of them are snack items for snack time. So if you are able to help out with some of those snack items, you can just take one of the pieces of paper and bring back the snack item next week and that'd be great. Um, we also, I think, could use a couple of volunteers and it's still not too late to sign kiddos up. So keep that in mind in the next few days as well. Also, our first communion banners are up and they are on the balcony and so we give thanks for our newest members at the table with us friendly reminder i was asked to let you know that the aarp class that was rescheduled for august there's still room for the full eight hour course um, which is over two days august 17th and 19th so you can check out the saturday email for more information about that or contact janet schmidt and finally we're doing a clothing drive with the preschool for uh, little ones with Blessed Bundles Ministry. And it's for clothing sizes 3T to 6T. And it can be new or gently used in good condition. Um, and there's a bin in the vestibule for that until I believe it's August 15th. So keep that in mind as well. I think those are all of our announcements unless somebody else has an announcement. Okay, then let us begin with our prayer reading. Please rise as you're able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, 
we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. Amen. I invite you to join in singing our opening hymn, In Christ's Call to Baptize. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, the Father of our Lord Jesus, you are the city that shelters us, the one who comforts us. With your spirit, accompany us on our life's journey, that we may spread your peace in all the world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. So for our children's sermon today, I brought with a picture of a seesaw. And the reason I brought the seesaw is because when we think about riding a seesaw, if you've never had, it's a lot of fun to do. Um, But what is really important when you're riding a seesaw? What do you need? Yeah, you need two people, right? (laughs) It really helps to have two people. Otherwise, it's not really much fun. And so... The two people that are on the seesaw are working together, and it's important for them to work together too, right? Because if you have one person that is trying to do it much stronger than the other person, then that other person might go flying off, right? So they got to work together, and they have a grand time. And so when we think about the seesaw, it's a reminder of what we're supposed to do in our lives too, because today we're going to hear in a couple of our readings about how we're supposed to work together for the good of all and how we're supposed to bear one another's burdens. And we're going to hear about how Jesus sends 70 people out 
But he doesn't send them out by themselves. He sends them out in pairs because there is a wondrous thing that happens when we work together and we bear one another's burdens and we work together for the good of all. We know a certain joy in community and we have compassion and love for one another along life's way. And that is what we remember today. The first reading is from the 66th chapter of Isaiah, starting at the 10th verse. Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her. All you who love her, rejoice with her in joy. All you who mourn over her, that you may nurse and be satisfied from her consoling breasts. That you may drink deeply with delight from her glorious bosom. For thus says the Lord, I will extend prosperity to her like a river and the wealth of the nations like an overflowing stream. You shall nurse and be carried on her arm and be dandled on her knee. As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. You shall see and your heart shall rejoice. Your bodies shall flourish like the grass. And it shall be known that the hand of the Lord is with his servants and his indignation is against his enemies. The word of the Lord. Be to God. The psalm will be read responsively. The congregation's responses are in bold. Psalm 66. Be joyful in God, all you lands. Be joyful, all the earth. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. Because of your great strength, your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down before you, sings to you, sings out your name. Come now and see the works of God. How awesome are God's deeds towards all people. Ruling forever in might, God keeps watch over the nations. Let no rebels exalt themselves. Bless our God, Let the sound of be heard. Our God has kept us among the living and has not allowed our feet to slip. The second reading is from the sixth chapter of Paul's letter to the Galatians, starting at the first verse. My friends, if anyone is detected in a transgression, you who have received the Spirit should restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Take care that you yourselves are not tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. For if those who are nothing think they are something, they deceive themselves. All must test their own work. Then that work, rather than their neighbor's work, will become a cause for pride. For all must carry their own loads. Those who are taught the word must share in all good things with their teacher. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For you reap whatever you sow. If you sow to your own flesh, you will reap corruption from the flesh. But if you sow to the Spirit, you will reap eternal life from the Spirit. So let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. So then, whenever we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all, and especially for those of the family of faith. See what large letters I make when I am writing in my own hand. It is those who want to make a good showing in the flesh that try to compel you to be circumcised, only that they may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. Even the circumcised do not themselves obey the law, but they want you to be circumcised so that they may boast about your flesh. May I never boast of anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ 
by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither circumcision nor uncircumcision is anything, but a new creation is everything. As for those who will follow this rule, peace be upon them and mercy and upon the Israel of God. The word of the Lord. According to St. Luke, the tenth chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. After this, the Lord appointed seventy others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I'm sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into its streets and say, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off in protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you listens to me, and whoever rejects you rejects me, and whoever rejects me rejects the one who sent me. The 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name, even the demons submit to us. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I've given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. There's an old folk tale about an enormous turnip that some attribute to Tolstoy, but there's been variations on this story that have been told over the many years. And it's the tale of a farmer who had a turnip grow to such immense proportions that he couldn't pull it out of the ground on his own. As a result, he called his wife over to help him, and she put her hands around his waist, and she pulled him while he pulled the turnip. Well, the turnip didn't budge, so they called over another family member to help, and their efforts still didn't produce an unearthed turnip. At this point, the tales can vary. Some recruit family animals to help in the process, while others recruit neighbors and townspeople. Eventually, the turnip is unearthed with the help of many, and some versions, that turnip is then used to make a tasty turnip soup that everybody enjoys. The point, of course, is that we all need help at various times in our lives. And when we accept the help of others, it can not only allow us to accomplish great things, but it can also build community among those working together and are who are blessed to be involved. Well, as I read our lessons for today, the second reading and the gospel lesson both seem to speak together in proclaiming the importance of supporting one another in both life and ministry. While we like to be independent, we know that we need others in many and various ways. Galatians 6 speaks to some of those ways. It says that if anyone transgresses, which is a fancy way of saying that they've sinned in some way, it says that those in the church should work to restore that person in a gentle way. 
And then my favorite line in all of our readings for this week is written, and it says this, bear one another's burdens, and in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. Let me say it again, it's so good. Bear one another's burdens, and in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. It goes on to advise being concerned about the quality of your own work instead of the quality of the work of your neighbor. And while we know this, it can at times be easier said than done. Because we have a tendency to judge others based on our own set of standards and the way that we believe that things should be, instead of simply focusing on our own work. Then a little further in the reading in Galatians, it has my second favorite line this week, which is this. So then, whenever we have the opportunity, let us work for the good of all, and especially for the family of faith. In a world where we're becoming more and more divided, it can be easy for us to simply want to take a stand on one side or the other and try to fight for what we believe is right. After all, as we celebrate 4th of July this week, we remember not only our independence as a nation, but also the freedoms that we have been afforded living in the United States. We know that we have a right to take a stand and advocate for what we believe in. It's a wonderful blessing to have that freedom, which not everyone around the world has. But with that freedom comes responsibility. While we've been blessed with certain freedoms in our country, our faith can be a guide for how to use those freedoms. Sadly, we know all too well how faith can be manipulated when it comes to our freedoms. There was a time when slavery was justified in this country by some through its presence in the Old Testament. During the World Wars, some used Luther's anti-Jewish writings to justify the Holocaust. And the Lutheran Church subsequently created a declaration in 1994 which apologized for the statements that Luther had made and how they were used to incite prejudice, violence, and murder, all things that our church does not condone. And more and more today, we find that people on both sides of various issues facing our country use faith to support their position. Sometimes their perspectives vary because of varying faith traditions. And other times they vary because, well, manipulating faith sometimes happens with people for their own benefit. So what are we to do as we seek to live our lives of faith in a society that is divided in its understanding of faith? Here again, my two favorite lines from our text from Galatians 6. Bear one another's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. And the second is this. So then, whenever we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all, and especially for those of the family of faith. As Christians, I think we all want to fulfill the law of Christ. According to Galatians, then, we do that by bearing one another's burdens. The only way that we can know what the burden of another is, is to take time to talk to them and learn about them as we listen to them. It doesn't mean that we'll necessarily agree with them, but it helps us to gain a greater understanding of where that person's coming from. And just by listening, sometimes we can help bear the burden. But sometimes our perspective is changed when we listen. And other times we learn about ways that we can help each other out to bear the burden. It makes us aware of opportunities to work for the good of all. And by doing so, to bring people together instead of continuing to be divided. Our gospel lesson from Luke chapter 10 is also a reminder that we're supposed to work together for the good of all. Jesus knew that the work that needed to be done would take more than just he and his disciples. 
And so he appointed 70 others to go ahead of him to every town and place where they were planning to go. And as he did so, he made it very clear that they were supposed to bear one another's burdens and work for the good of all, because he didn't send those 70 out individually. But instead, he had them go out in pairs. And they weren't supposed to take anything for their journey, but instead rely on the kindness of others that they encountered along the way. Now I'm sure that those who are part of the 70 didn't always completely agree with the people that they were paired with or the people that they found themselves staying with. But as they did ministry in Christ's name, they knew that they were called to bear one another's burdens and work for the good of all. So that's what they tried to do. And the kingdom continued to grow as a result. As you live your life as a follower of Christ today, I encourage you to listen to those around you in order to be able to help bear their burdens and work together for the good of all. Engaging others to join you and also help you. Creating community instead of conflict. Support instead of strife. And while you may not always agree, perhaps having grace for one another might be a little easier knowing the burdens that another person bears. And also knowing that we ourselves are in need of grace from others as well. In this country in which we live and celebrate this weekend, we have the opportunity as Christians to use our freedoms to help bear one another's burdens and to work for the good of all. May our faith help us to build community in our nation as well as to guide us to care for those who differ from us in order that burdens might be lifted, the good of all might be worked for, and we might know the harvest of peace as we journey towards the fullness of the kingdom at the last. Amen. Our hymn of the day, Lord, you give the great commission. Please rise as you're able.
invite you to join me now as we profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, the creation, and all in need. Lord of the harvest, you send your church into the world to proclaim Christ's new creation to all. Renew the church as it carries out its mission of peace and healing. We pray for missionaries who accompany your people. God of grace. Your creation abounds with flowing waters and diverse creatures. Guide the work of scientists as they develop and advocate ways to restore Earth's natural balance. Motivate humankind to adopt lifestyles that protect and sustain the Earth. God of grace. You guard the nations. Let no leaders exalt themselves, but lift up the most vulnerable and work for the good of all. Send your spirit to eradicate classism and inequity, violence and war, poverty and hunger. God of grace, you desire abundant life for all. As we celebrate Independence Day, instill in us gratitude, generosity, and persistence in working toward freedom for all people. God of grace, nurturing God, you care for all people in need. Nourish those who are hungry. Restore employment to those who have lost work. Heal those who are sick and comfort all who are dying or grieving. God of grace. We remember the saints who proclaim your reign on earth and now rest in you. Make us faithful in our witness to Christ's new creation. God of grace. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please be seated.
Let us pray. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened the way of, etern of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit to be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In Christ's presence there is fullness of joy. Come to the banquet. Thanks be to God. This is the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink. And for our young ones who do not yet receive communion, anyone else who may like a little extra blessing today, I offer this for you. The Lord bless you now and always. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. May the God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. 
I invite you now to rise as you are able as we sing together our sending hymn, We All Are One in Mission. Go in peace, love your neighbor. Thanks be to God. Thanks. 